I gotta move my music. Play, I need to play get something. The... Play that thing. Play that thing. You can hear play. You know, this, this evening has been planned for and prayed over for a while. And I just expect that the Lord he has something different for each one of us. He, he knows exactly what we need. And he's able to do what none of us can do in a human fashion, right? Um, so tonight I wanted to let you know that we are going to kind of have a little bit of participation here and there. I was really, I'm really happy to see some children here um, because there's, there's different parts where we're going to kind of ask them some questions. And we're also going to ask each other, like ourselves, questions, whether we're kids or adults. And there might there be a little of opportunity for you to discuss one of the first questions with the people that you came with. So with your family, and um, I think that'll be a meaningful exercise. But right now, I guess, all of us are feeling like weary of the masks and the separation and missing community with each other. And so these worship nights, the one with women and then tonight's for families, have, were born out of 
a desire to reconnect with the Lord in the midst of all the noise of what's going on in our culture. And, you know, I don't even need to tell you guys what all that's all about. I mean, COVID, dumb politics, news that you're not even sure you can believe, you know, it's just, it's crazy. But, you know, we have a sure foundation. We know things that are not changing. God is not changing. His word will not change. So we should be the people that have peace. We have a direction from the Lord in, in times like these. And I, I especially appreciate that we're in the book of Peter because that informs so much of how we can navigate these days, right? You can finding it helpful, church? Yeah? Y'all find it helpful? All right. Um, so... We're going to start with a, a great hymn that's, um, the first word of this hymn is come, and we're going to invite the Lord to be among us, so in all that he is, Father, Son, and Spirit. And I see some children coming in, so I'll get to my piano and maybe they'll get here by then. Here we go. Let me see if I can. 
chairs together. All right. Hello? Okay. So, so this, this verse tells us not to be afraid, right? Are people afraid today? Yeah. People are really afraid today for lots of reasons. But let's just think about ourselves now. Take a moment and ask ourselves, and I want you to read with me. Ready? What am I afraid of? Okay, think about that. Next question. Where is my faith in these days? Okay, so the people you came with, when you think about what you're afraid of, you guys can go up and talk to your mom and dad about it really quick, okay? Just everybody go around to the people you came with and mention what your fear is. What am I afraid of? And then those who can answer the next question, what about my faith in light of my fears? Okay, so chit-chat a bit. I want to hear some chit chat. Come on. Worship team, you guys participate. go on a long time but we're going to go on to the next part but you guys you can keep this conversation going on going when you get home okay it's a good bedtime conversation okay as you think of your faith each one of you you just thought about it think about your faith um, does your faith today feel stripped down does it feel kind of bare exposed are dealing with some really big things. 
Or is your faith being fortified as you lean in and draw near to the Lord? Those are kind of our options, right? And this isn't to, to correct anybody, like to, to spank your, you know, hit your hand or anything if, if you're not drawing near to the Lord. But if you're in that first category, be aware that he is for you and you can draw near to the Lord in that, cer that thing that you're afraid of, okay? So. Let's see. And then there's another question cons to consider. Let's read this together. Does it matter how big my faith is? Let me, let me just hear from you. Answer that question. Anybody say yes or no? Yes? Does it matter how big my faith is? No? I heard no. Okay. Anybody? All right. Is my faith enough? That's another question. Okay, this is where I brought something. And those people who are children, I would like your family to go with you up to this table, just one family at a time, that have children. And I have something that I never use in my spice cabinet. It's called mustard seed. And you know there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you have faith as big as a mustard seed, which you're going to find what, how, how big that is, you can say to this mountain, move. And it's talking about situations in your life, not a real mountain. But that's all you need. Because why? Let me see. Let me see if, if, if I went to the punchline too soon. Let's see. Ah. It doesn't matter how big your faith is. What matters is where it rests. Does it rest on a faithful, strong, trustworthy God that we've just sang about? Or does it rest on health, normalcy, community, peaceful relationships? So even faith as small as a mustard seed is big enough if it trusts in a big God, right? Now I want the kids and the families, let's do it one at a time. Do you guys want to start? And then well, we're going to play a song and sing it while you guys do this. And then you guys, and then we have Joe back there. Okay, so we've got three families. So you can just take the top off and, and let the kids have a mustard seed.
of your kingdom. Okay, I have a question for the kids. Do you know what a scepter is, anyone? I don't see anybody, so tell me. If you raise your hand, you just shout it out. What is a scepter? Hmm. I think I wouldn't have known how to answer it if I hadn't done this beforehand. So let's see what that, project that, and let's read. Kids, you guys get to read this now, okay? Ready? This is what a scepter is. Go. Ceremonial staff often used by kings. With its jewels and ornamentation. What's that? Do you ever, do you guys put ornaments up at Christmas? Yeah. Okay, well, you know, this scepter, this staff, like a cane, but it has all these jewels on it. That's what ornamentation is. So let's do that sentence with its jewels. Ready? With its jewels and ornamentation, a scepter is a symbol of power. Okay, so that means more when you know what the word means, right? So let's start at the beginning of this verse again and let's all read it together. So we're talking to God. Ready? Let's read. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions.
without the suffering and tension, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Now, ladies, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'll read, everyone read with me now. And these, these are questions for yourself. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you in turmoil Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation, my God.
brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, now reach down, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. When ten thousand years take away from my they hear my heart. There's always a way I can find when I am desperate for shelter.
Keep you raised, baby.